Hello everyone, Umber Ray is here to bring you the latest JP news, so let's get right into it. And to do that, as always, we need a bit of music, if you're wondering why it's dark in here. Hot outside, I don't want the sunlight in. Not much today, but enough that it does make a little bit of a temperature difference. So, what is on the schedule for the JP side, well, it is the raid event, and the raid event will be happening from May the 20th to May the 31st. Uh, and for those of you on the global side who are not currently aware, there are two new systems being that have been added to the raid event on the JP side. First of all is the box system. The box system is <clears throat> kind of this bonus thing where you it has special gifts uh, for, you know, going in each box. And once you have gotten all the special gifts in those box, you can reset it and go to the next box. And by going to the next box, it will have some special prizes. And there is a set list of things you can get out of each of these boxes. When the final box is done, you basically get put into the regular pool of just using coins to summon. But there is a fairly high currency need rate. It's not impossible, but uh, it is a little bit of trying to push gently players down a mountain. Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, it does push players into trying to get the raid units because the raid units, as well as the free unit that comes with the Mog King, give bonuses. So, for instance, if you were to get a 7-star Arden or a 7-star uh, Regis, who are our new characters, and I'll get to them in a minute, uh, you get a 60% bonus on currency. Uh, you get a 30% for just a, uh, you know, a regular Arden or a Regis, uh, or a 7-star Gantiana, and 20% for a regular Gantiana. So that's kind of your bonuses. But uh, to talk about what is in the boxes, uh, Box 1 has a 5 or more, basically a 5-star guaranteed ticket. Uh, it's Box 2 has a 5-star selected ticket, as well as a special item to do the, you know, the crafting. Uh, step 4 has a 4% trust Moogle for all, uh, and from there it's just a whole bunch of other stuff. And I gotta say, it seems like these are consistently getting worse, they are consistently getting scaled back. Originally, when uh, they had started to do the changes, there were a lot of EX tickets. Then we went down to a 5-star EX ticket and, you know, uh, a UOC and some other bonuses. And now it just feels even more scaled back as we went through the FF3 and the FF15 month. So generosity does have its limitations. Uh, the craftables are a piece of clothing, 12 defense, 8 spirit, and 15% fire resistance. Schmeh. Uh, upgraded clothes, though, uh, you basically craft the original clothes and then you craft the upgraded clothes. Uh, 36 defense, 24 spirit, and 50% fire resistance. Eh, okay, it's okay. I don't think it's great or anything. Also, a great sword, 76 attack, shmeh, as well as a materia, 5% HP and 20% fire resistance. So if you're still needing the crafting stuff for materia for the trophies then you could probably just craft a whole bunch of these unlikely though as you'll need those bonus units uh continuing on the new characters we have both arden as well as king regis so i guess we finally got a king but he doesn't share a banner with king rain remember who the real boss is people so, this banner runs from the 20th at 5 p.m. to the 31st at midnight. And I feel like I get these questions all the time. Why don't the banner show up on the JP side for the people who are still playing? Set your time to JP standard time or your... Like, come on. Every time. I gotta feel this question. Anyway, the interesting thing is that these are not some investable units. So, Alum is pushing that back. I feel like uh, maybe because of the negative feedback, maybe because they lost some of their player base and some of their whales. Maybe they realized that it was a dumb idea, or maybe they're keeping the raids as free characters that can be UOC'd so they don't have to incur total wrath of players and can keep some players in a place of moderate happiness and complacency. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Let's talk about the units. Arden, TMR is a hat. Okay, 
40 attack, 20% dark resistance, some percent MP per turn, some limit burst per turn, and auto regen. Variation on the other hats that are out there, I think it's okay. I don't think it's anything super amazing. It definitely doesn't feel as cool as uh, some of the summon fest stuff, but that's the way it's always going to be. Summon fest characters are just higher value in both TMR, Super TMR, and Kit most of the time. Super TMR is a Materia, 20% HP, 60% attack, and all ailment resist. So basically, there's your thing that's really going to push players, because why make the, t the TMRs don't need to really be great? The Super TMRs need to be great, because that's what people are going to focus on, a, especially if there's not a great step up. And I really gotta make a video about this, or just spend a portion of this video talking about step ups and alums, more recent strategies with step ups and announcing them. Super TMR is obviously a really high value for attackers. 20% HP and ailment survive it, status rem, immunity is just kind of, you know. Uh, really great for attackers. It's the only thing that really you could super high value on attackers at this point. Plus 60% attack unconditionally. Great super TMR, but there's got to be a reason for it, and it's got to be bait. Limit Burst is AoE defense ignoring damage and fire and dark imperil. Okay? He is a fire and dark element attacker with AoE damage and fire and dark imperil respectively on his abilities. AoE fire ice Thunder damage, chance of confuse, stop, paralyze, respectively. So, sounds kind of like Noctis, but maybe not a hybrid damage dealer anymore because Alum don't care about hybrid damage dealers. Single target, upward scaling, uh, attack and defense break, or single target, upward scaling, magic and spirit break. I'm not overly crazy about this because normally a boss on the JP side for trials is not defense or spirit breakable, which means you just have to use two abilities here to get the attack and magic break, so it, it's not overly exciting, it's not terrible either, I just don't, I think that trials have become so advanced that you just need someone who can break attack and magic at the same time with one ability for just convenience as well as, you know, efficiency, and so it depends on, like always, it depends on the percentages, but we'll keep going. AoE defense ignoring damage and self fire imbue. So we can either put fire or single target defense ignoring damage uh, with dark imbue. So we can either put fire or dark on himself. Uh, seven stars. All allies, or all stats up and an AoE fire or dark in peril. That's all we get for a seven star kit. Uh, probably we'll have a few other attacks in there. Uh, seems to be just basically a damage dealer. Uh, fire, dark, focus, dark, not super great. Fire is a other potentially okay element to have. All stats up on al all allies, though, is kind of weird. Uh, I'm just going to talk flavor text, uh, and maybe I, I, I definitely am not a 15 expert, so don't comment on it. Don't care. But... He never really seemed to be a team player. Yeah, he had the demons on his side, but he never seemed like he was a buffer, so it's kind of a weird thing to have in his kit flavor-wise, I feel like. But either way, I don't really care anymore. Uh, moving on, Regis. Uh, Regis TMR. Materia, 20% HP and 40% attack. Auto protect and shell. So, same as Arden's Super TMR. It is a basically a boost for attackers. Okay, all right. I don't think that uh, it's bad because it's at the regular TMR level, but it's also not as great. I mean, auto protect and shell feels maybe a little dated, so it eh, seems fine. It's HP and attack. It doesn't feel super special, but there you go. Uh, Super TMR is a sword, 163 attack, 20% MP, and 100% limit burst fill rate. Obviously a sword for uh, true dual wielders uh, that are limit burst focused. Not so much Onion Knight, although I wouldn't say no because it's a high attack sword and some extra MP never hurts either. Again, uh, the, the bait here is just getting things that are UOCable to the Super TMR level. Uh, Regis is... T like it, they both Regis and Arden feel opposite, where the better materia or the better 
Equipment is just super TMR level to push people into getting super TMRs, and depending on what the step up is, it may or may not be important. Limit burst, AoE damage, plus all allies, three turn damage mitigation and barrier, so seems a little supporty, plus some damage. Uh, he is classed as a support unit, all allies, damage mitigation plus barrier, all allies attack magic up plus HP regen, all allies defense and spirit up plus MP refresh, all allies defense and spirit break resistance plus magic damage mitigation, all allies stop resistance up, and physical damage mitigation, single target, defense ignoring damage, all allies barrier, W Regis, why don't we just call it like double abilities? Why does it have to be double Regis and double Arden? I guess because they're specific abilities, but just make a general ability. Ugh. Anyway, 7 star, all allies, all stats, huge buff. Ooh, the, I was a little bored there, but then the huge totally saved it. Yeah, snark. Anyway, grants uh, an ability to all other allies for one use, and uh, that ability is single target light damage and self MP restore. Uh, single target, uh, two times uh, defense ignoring damage, all allies damage mitigation. Uh, seven stars also has triple casting and all allies physical magic, demon, human, spirit, killer buff. So, physical and magical, I mean, Regis seems like an interesting support. It'll de depend, you know, what the final stuff of his kit looks like, whether it's consistently accessible, whether the mitigation numbers are high enough, and whether his damage is even worth mentioning, but because it's like, yeah, all buffers can do some damage if they attack, so... And the other thing is the ability that he gives other people, while it is light damage, which is interesting, is it a chaining ability? Is it just single target damage? Is it just for the MP restore and how good the MP restore is? Obviously a support unit is really depending on this point in percentages since the advertised percentages never feel quite as good since trials have hidden numbers to them. Another reason why we need those data mines, but uh, I want to talk a little bit really quickly before we move on to the trial talk about the step up banner because the step up banner is something that is being completely omitted from the news it used to be a thing where in the news uh prints like the in-game stuff the uh, step up banner would be printed out early but now it's just hidden and i really hate this I really do, because why? Why are you why do you have to hide this, Alan? Why do you have to be essentially this shifty, shady business practices now of doing all of this stuff of hiding things? Is it because we're not going to like it beforehand and people are just going to accept it in the game when it's already posted? I really can't understand why they used to post this stuff in game beforehand and now they don't. And I think that it's just really shitty, and again, this is the reason why I quit the game, because Alum is just hiding information. You may say, well, you don't really need it to uh, come out before in the game, but I mean, why then even post characters at all? I mean, why post any information in-game until it is just in-game, other than, I mean, it has to be that the deal's just not that good. And this is a step up max five. It's probably going to be similar to all the other ones with these guaranteed tickets that you have to go five runs through a step up to get enough to get a single character. It just, I, I just don't like it. Uh, and who knows what the step up looks like. Hopefully it's decent. Hopefully there is a guaranteed unit on it. There probably will be. These aren't summon festival characters, so there isn't a great incentive to make these incredibly difficult to get, I feel like. So, yeah. Anyway, and moving on from the stuff I don't really like, which is that step-up banner stuff. Great for people who spend money, but at this point I just don't recommend supporting the game in terms of spending money, so there you go. Tiamat uh, is the trial, the Scorn version. Ooh. Uh, available after maintenance, clear reward is Ancient Sword, FFB, 166 attack with plant and undead physical killer. Okay, uh, could mean that Marlboro is coming up for a trial, or 
who knows we could see um, if we're seeing time at we could see lich potentially again I don't know recycling stuff or could see you know something along those lines so I guess we'll have to wait and see uh, trials challenges will be kill with a limit burst 10% trust removal summon an esper 50 trust coins or within 25 turns uh, one UOC ticket so 25 turns makes it seem like it will be a DPS challenge to some extent tips are various elemental attacks and poison okay uh, use dragon killer no shit it's a dragon Use magic cover, uh, so it will be, I guess, a magic trial, so bring your CG Charlottes with a lot of elemental protection and time your jumps correctly, which could mean that there is a specific turns that are incredibly deadly. Anyway, so that's basically the JP news, and I've already done my rant, so I don't really want to continue this video much longer, but because there are other things that... Eh, but anyway, the raid event... Uh, feels is it's nice that they are still UOCs for the people who are still playing the game. Hey, you can use your UOC on something that is new. Whether these units, either of them, are going to be good, good, but not summon festival level, which is the more powerful level. And it needs to be seen what the step up banner is going to look like. But hey, at least Alan figured out how to put two new units on a sim on the same banner. You know, so you, you you get a guaranteed new Anyway, so that's all. Uh, are you going for the summon ba for this banner? Are you passing on it? Are you waiting for more data? I guess we'll find out tomorrow because the maintenance happens tomorrow for three hours. And then the only other big thing to note is that the uh, Something very big will be happening at the end of this month, the live stream, and it'll be interesting to see what that live stream looks like. Uh, if Alum goes on, as I've said before, if Alum decides to not address the elephant in the room, the number of people who have quit, as well as the general game direction, I think this game is basically in zombie state, where whatever they will, people will spend on the game, profits for Alum, and other than that, they just doesn't matter to them. So I guess we'll find out very soon in that live stream, which I will be covering on Twitch because people want to know the information, so I'll do it. But uh, i still not coming back to the game, not even remotely. So anyway, that's all for now. Talk to you next time.